our scripture this morning from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame is not hidden from you. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. And John 1. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip, and he said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael, and he said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming towards him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asking him, Where did you come to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. <coughs> Once again, good morning. It's great to be back with you this second Sunday of January 2018. And we're, we're still, uh, Christmas is over. And we're talking about the, the beginning. We went from the birth of Christ almost right to his ministry. The birth of the ministry. And last week was our Wow Sunday. We talked about those great events that that happened in our lives and we, we, the only thing that could have made that happen is God. And today we, we take a, a next step into the, the calling of the disciples. Um, the ministry was just beginning. Jesus had been baptized and his father said, this is my son who I am well pleased. And the journey begins. And we know that, that Peter, last Sunday, was, was called and he said, come and follow me. And, and Peter is the, the rock, the starting of the church and part of God's plan. So we, we move into Nathaniel and, and Philip. And they're, they're, they're from the same area where the other where Peter was from. So the talk of Jesus, it, it, it's a small area. And you know how they didn't have cell phones back then or there wasn't a newspaper, but, but talk went from, from square to town square and, and they'd heard about Jesus and some of the things that was taking place. And only greatness is what they heard. And... 
Peter had decided to drop everything and follow. And, and Philip, as we heard, decided to follow. And Philip had a friend, Nathaniel. Now, Nathaniel was, uh, he knew, the, he knew the, the laws. And I'm going to get to that because uh, Jesus, when, when Philip had told Nathaniel, come and you, you've got to see, Philip's first reaction was, how can anything come out of Nazareth? How can, how can anything good come out of that place? I want you to think of in your time of growing up, just like Nathaniel said, how can anything good come out of that place, which we're speaking of Nazareth. I want you, when I, when I was growing up, there was a little, little section up in Owen County. And uh, there was a little section where the houses weren't quite like everyone else's. And there were some people that lived there, and, and we would always say, how can anything good come out of, I'm not going to name it because I'm ashamed to even say that I used to think that, but how can anything good come out of there? Now I want you to think in your, in your time of growing up, or maybe yesterday, you said something, how can anything good come out of there? And then fill in that, was you able to fill in that there you know, we're, we're human, aren't we? And that's, that's the way we think sometimes. And even disciples thought that way. Now getting back to Nathaniel, in our, in our psalm reading this morning, uh, it, what I get out of that reading is, God knows everything about us. Did you get that? Even before you're born, even before you're conceived in your mother's womb, God knows every single thing about you. He knows what's going to happen tomorrow and 10 years from now and 20 years from now. And it even says, when David wrote the psalm, it even says that the last day is known. We don't know, but God knows. And he knew before we even became who we are. That's a mighty, powerful God, isn't it? To know something like that. So that, that's telling me that, that when Jesus was starting his ministry, he, he God, knew the, the disciples that he was going to pick to share the good news of Jesus Christ. That good news of loving unconditionally. Being non-judgmental like Dennis was saying this morning. Now, Nathaniel, being human, said, How can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, Nazareth was a, a small town that was surrounded by the Roman soldiers. It was, it was kind of a, it was a place where people, people lived. They, they were slaves. They did mediocre jobs, but there just wasn't any greatness there. A few carpenters and Jesus. But how can anything good come out of such a bad place? Well, once again, we're reminded that God came to earth and became man and was humble. So what a better place for the Savior of mankind to come from. Now Nathaniel, he'd, he'd studied the Word, he, he meditated on the Word, he knew the laws of Moses, and Jesus said, I saw you under the fig tree. Now, Jesus didn't, Nathaniel didn't see Jesus up on the hill staring down at him. Jesus knew. He, he knew because as we go back to the psalm, God knows everything, right? God knows every single thing about us even before we come out into this world. So Nathaniel, being a man of, of, of integrity, knowing the laws, and, and being raised, waiting on that Savior, waiting on that Messiah, the Son of God, to come, I kind of imagine it doesn't say what Nathaniel was doing 
under the fig tree, but usually in, in, in study it seems like fig trees were in gardens of, of, in a quiet area and in, in a town area you had a fig tree. You kind of had a little park and a place to meditate and a place to think. And I, I kind of think Nathaniel was being a, a man of integrity and, and a good Israelite, Jesus said, that he was there maybe talking to the Father, maybe studying, maybe uh, going over things that were happening in Nazareth. Why are things the way they are? But I know you're going to send a Savior someday. He was a man of hope. Now you don't hear a whole lot about Nathaniel in the Bible, but just this little little thing that we're we're learning today, it it it, it kind of helped me move on and know that that discipleship is is important. And there's a constant need for discipleship. So Nathaniel, his first response to the Son of God was. How can anything good come out of... Or he told Philip, how can anything good come out? And then when he met him, Jesus, I know all about you. I know you was under the fig tree. And that was all it took for Nathaniel's eyes to be open and says, I am yours. You are the Son of God. I will follow. And a man of faith, a man of integrity, became a follower of Jesus Christ. Discipleship. And Jesus calls us to be his disciples. Now every once in a while someone gets interested in Christianity. They get interested in that, that feel-good movement. They get interested in loving your neighbor. They get interested in life change. Now I want you to think, I, I love to make the people think. I want you to think about someone in your life right now that is on that point. I, I, I know there's something else, but I just can't grasp this Jesus thing. I just can't grasp in the way the world is today, how can anything good come out of that? And then here you're trying to tell me about Christianity. Jesus Christ, a Savior. I'm curious, but I need to know more. Some that you come across in your discipleship walk, because each and every one of us are disciples of Christ, right? Because we're here learning about Him, and we're going out into the world today after this service is over. I remember years ago, the service is over, the work begins. The service begins. When we leave this place, we come here to get recharged. This is our fig tree. We're meditating, we're getting recharged to go out and do the work we're called to do. Now I'm going to read, I'm going to read about a, a, a man that came to Jesus, and Jesus told him what he needed to do. But sometimes, you see, one of my dear friends, Mike Roth, once told me, life's all about choices. There's the right choice, and there's the wrong choice. There's no other. You may not have thought about that, but there's no other. There's the right choice and the wrong choice. I want to go to Matthew this morning. And we're going to... Matthew 19, 16 through 30. And you, you've all heard this, but I want to share it with you. And think of it as you hear these words, discipleship. And know that God knows, as, as in the Psalms we heard this morning, God knows from the, from the very beginning all about us. Every single thing about us. Nothing is hidden from God. Not a thing. But because of Jesus Christ, we can have eternal life and become His disciple just by asking Him into our life and living the, living the life that, living the Christ life. But then there's people like this. Okay, 
Matthew 19. I'm not going to get to it here. Sixteen through thirty. Now behold, one came and said to him, Good teacher, what good things shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but one, that is God. But if you want to enter into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said, You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and your mother, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young men said to him, All these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said, said to him, See what I have left all and followed, followed you. Therefore, what shall I have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on his throne of glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. And everyone who has left, left his house, his brothers, his sisters, his father, his mother, his wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Amen. Amen. Discipleship. God knows it. I'm going to put it as simple, 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 simple. God knows you. God knew you before you was even born. And God has come to you saying, I want you to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. I want you to be the body of Christ. To go out into this world. And to spread the gospel. To spread the love. The light of Christ. Now each and every one of us here today. We got up this morning. We put on our shoes. And we thank God for life. Right? And we went out and we scraped the ice off our windshield. And we drove to church to worship Jesus Christ our risen Lord and Savior. That's why we're here. And then we hear the word, and then we leave, and we'll go right into service, go right into work, doing what disciples do. Amen? Amen. That's what we're all going to do when we leave this place, right? Or are we going to go home, we're going to hurry up and turn on the ball game, get dinner going, and make sure we, we got our Sunday afternoon structure, the TV control, everything's, everything's good. That's the world. That's what we get so caught up in. 
The reason I read the story about the rich man, uh, sure, you can be wealthy. You can, you can have whatever your heart's desire, but you need to do it with the focus of God. But in today's time, in today's world, we let the world blind us. We become blind. And that invitation is there, even though you're doing everything right, but that invitation is there, but sometimes we say, no, I, I, better, I don't want to give up this or that. And then we walk away. Now those people that are saying, nah, I don't want to be part of that right now. I'm going to walk away for a while. That's our job as disciples to go to those people and say, listen, come on back. Because life is good. Because we have that thing that filled up the void in us that you're suffering from right now. That void is the lack of having Christ in your life the lack of doing what you should be doing. The lack of loving everyone, unconditional. No matter who they are, no matter what they look like, no matter where they come from, nothing good comes from Nazareth. Nothing good comes from the world. So, put Christ before the world. Choose to be that disciple we're called to be. Go out into the world and change it. Amen?